everyone. A young man, when interviewed, said that he was looking for guidance from the Lord as to where he should be a missionary. When considering it deeply one day, whilst out walking, a van passed up the road with Brazil nuts written in big, colourful letters across it. That was it! The Lord wants him to go to Brazil. The news interviewer then asked, What would you have done if the van had Mars bar written across it? Yes, I know we have missions to Mars, but they are space missions. Judging by today's gospel, a missionary vocation calls for a little less naivety than our young friend had. Today, in the gospel, we find our Lord sending 72 disciples out on a mission. Now, when we talk about the missions, what first springs to mind are all those men and women who go overseas to establish the church and set up mission stations abroad. More often than not, these foreign mission stations will include a church, a school, a dispensary, sometimes a hospital and even a mill for grinding corn. Worldwide, in case you don't know, the Catholic Church runs over 5,000 hospitals and 10,000 orphanages, not to mention thousands upon thousands of schools. We are also, incidentally, the world's biggest charity. If the Catholic Church were to cease operations, especially in these developing countries, the situation would be dire as far as, as, far as medical, educational, spiritual and even practical needs of his people are concerned. Do you know, isn't it a sad fact that the secular press rarely, if ever, highlight these wonderful things? but mostly focus on the negative. I suppose it sells more papers. We can conclude from the above that mission is not just about preaching a gospel message of eternal salvation, which of course it is, but it also concerns itself with people's quality of life in the here and now. The salvation of our souls often works in tandem with the salvation of our bodies and if our bodies are undernourished or diseased or people go without basic education, we cannot operate properly. We could call this a more holistic approach to missionary work. One little seven-year-old boy from a developing country was asked what he wants to be when he grew up. He replied, alive! That's where missionary work begins. We can talk about heaven until the cows come home, but it will probably be the last thing on the mind of a person who goes to bed hungry every night, as a lot of them do. For them, heaven is a square meal every day. Jesus, in sending out the 72, advised them to eat what was set before them and not overindulge. The problem with a lot of Western world people is that we overeat and often throw good food away while others go hungry. Missionary work falls within the scope of every Christian's vocation. On the day of reckoning, our Lord will ask us if we fed the hungry, clothed the naked, visited the sick and welcomed the unwanted. He won't ask us how many spiritual highs we've had, or even he won't even ask us if we ever read the Bible. But then again, converting love into action is itself spiritually uplifting. Don't we always feel better when we do good for people? When the 72 came back rejoicing, and said that even the demons submitted to them using Jesus' name. He cautioned them not to get carried away. Pride comes before a fall. How many preachers and missionary people have fallen from grace? Rejoice rather that our names are written in heaven. Our names 
that means everyone's name needs to be written there as well. Now thank you all for listening and God bless you all. Oh.